So the last company, how does it feel to be number 10? Is words, is it live or live? Words live. Words live. Here we go. You know, don't feel any pressure. You're the last company. After 10, people have been here for two hours. They're all tired. But, you know, that's why we save you for the last. That's why they do it. That's, that's right. That's right. In. Buenos tardes. <laughs> <laughs> All right, buenas tardes. <laughs> so I'm Sage, I'm the founder of Words Live, and I'm going to speak about uh, our strategy and how we innovate literacy and how we're solving for a chronic underperformance in urban and rural areas uh, with our methodology. So we're going to our classroom here, and we're going to go quickly right to Nicole Cho. She's one of our teaching ambassador partners. She faces the same pain points that many of her colleagues do. Uh, they're time starved, they're attempting to engage their students, uh, and they're trying to wrestle with these challenging standards. And so we come in with supplemental material and we're able to improve performance, improve engagement. Now she's in Prince George's County, Maryland, one of our three partners, and we're at just under half a million dollars in contract services. So we'll talk a bit more about what we do with the schools there. I patented a process called contemporary grammar integration. Effectively, I can isolate grammar in any text, but particularly with music, and it augments that experience, it increases engagement, but it gives kids reading and writing skills to apply to the material in class. We then create lesson plans around that. So typically, like Nicole Cho, she has her learning unit, and she may have to teach The Great Gatsby, Othello, 1984. The problem is, that is the way she's been doing it, has only accounted for about 35% proficiency in reading. So we have our standards we have to teach, but we know that students need actual skills as they go through this material. So what we do is we come in and we use Taylor Swift to teach Great Gatsby, we use Kanye West to teach Othello, and we'll use Justin Timberlake to teach 1984. Again, we're isolating specific writing skills that go through those lyrics that we then map back over into the book. And what we're seeing is an 80% proficiency, so there's been an increase in the performance of the students. So we packaged this whole thing up, and we decided, you know, how large can it be? Well, because you have history, social studies, English, digital media, new media classes, we have extensions into a lot of different skills and disciplines in school. You can see modus ponens, deductive logic, you see algebraic expressions and mathematics. And because we look structurally, as an example, Shakespeare will say something like, my love is a fever longing still. John Legend will say, our love's an asylum where you and I go structurally the same, although we're fi over 500 year difference. So the structure remains the same throughout time. Now the way we're gonna implement this is our business strategy, which is three Ps, programs, professional development, and our past, which is a platform as a service. So we'll talk a little bit about that now. Our market for these three Ps is large. You can see 21 billion for programming, 18 billion for PDs, and then nine plus, and I know that, that measure gets fudged sometimes, but nine plus billion in platforms like ours. And so the platform looks the way it works, it's a subscriber-based model. We go in and do this program for schools. We then train teachers to do it themselves, and we then leave the platform behind for them to continue to build. We would like the teachers to, tr to treat them as content creators that they are, and we give them royalties. So they're paid royalties, think Spotify model. And then this is shot out because we use a bunch of artist integration, shot out through social media, think Periscope. You're Periscoping live into the classroom when the lesson plan is streamed. And this gives students some agency over their education. They become co-creators of the lesson plans because they know the music that they can then co-create with their teachers and they're creating lesson plans on the fly um, in the classroom. It's a subscription-based model. We're looking at 50 bucks a year for teachers, 99 cents for students, uh, and we wanna make teachers' income much, much, much more robust. Uh, and our projections now, these are our three revenue lanes, the programs, the PDs, and the platform. Right now, we're increasing our districts, but we look at that platform as being the anchor of the business into the future. And next, what we can do is chat. Let's extend this conversation. We are raising money, but please tweet us at Words Live. You can email me directly, and I'd love to share some of the work that we're doing. Thank you. So can you clarify um, what this contemporary grammar instruction, what does that mean? So it's contemporary grammar integration. Oh, integration. I already yep. got it wrong. <laughs> oh, no <laughs> Sorry. worries. So we isolate grammar from song lyrics, 
even from social media, sometimes even from slang that you'll see on the ground in the districts. We didn't take those structures, map those back into the text that are going through in history or social studies or English to show them the way that they're, the rules that they're abiding by exist in the text that they're reading and trying to conquer. So you then internalize the skill of isolating, identifying grammar, but then applying those rules in our own writing. So that's when we've seen the comprehension go up. You, you spoke about uh, PD platforms and then users, so it's, it's hard to penetrate three markets when you're getting started. How, how are you going to approach that, you know, multi-tiered approach? We think it, it, it's a mutually reinforcing system, mobile. right? And so we go in with the program because that's kind of where we started. That's our bread and butter. Uh, you know, we deal with a bunch of Title I schools, so we get funding that way. <laughs> But for the platform to be viable and also for you to, us to really build in capacity, we have to leave the teachers with the resources. So we train teachers in this methodology. It's something we patented. It's, you know, once it's patented, it's publicly available. Now you just need the training to do it yourself. Every week, there's a new album that comes out. There's a new mixtape. This is the evergreen process. So if you can develop your techniques as a teacher to constantly do that, we've done our job. We've, that's the part, the PD part that, that we work with. Got it. And I guess one question on the matching. You mentioned Kanye West and Taylor Swift. How does that matching actually happen? Is there somebody on your team who's trying to find correlations between these two, the artists in the book? Yep. Yeah, so we, we, we do have a, a small team of, of minds, and I have hip-hop artists on my team. I'm a songwriter myself. Yep. And so we have this strategy that we literally will hear albums and immediately do pattern recognition. So that's where it starts. And the album looks at there are certain rules that will justify what a figurative language uh, selected text looks like. An extended metaphor has the exact same structure. An analogy has the exact same structure. A New York Times article, an essay, has the exact same structure. So if you can cognize that structure, then we can get kids to really get that particular skill, identify while they're reading it, and then apply it in their own writing. The thing is, they're creating their own grammar structures all the time. If you've ever tried to speak to a 13-year-old kid, you'll know sometimes they say words and phrases that make no sense, but they've created rules to communicate with each other. So we just map that over to rules that have pre-existed them in the text, and that's how we, we make that bridge. Got it, and you've got 500K worth of contracts today. Yeah, so we're right? with DC Public Schools, and uh, this was a new initiative under Obama's My Brother's Keeper initiative. We're partners with Empowering Males of Color for DC. That's a new program that literally just rolled out in 2016. They awarded 1.7 mil to schools, we got three of them. Got it, and how many teachers, I try to think about in the classroom who's using this as a resource, how many teachers are, are using it? So we average about five to six schools per district, and in those schools there's usually about 20 teachers, I would say, between the training and the programs. So probably about just under 100 teachers total. So then you showed, you showed that um, kind of your system for the teach. so teachers are creating lessons with this, is that right? So we're the content creators right now. Like this is our platform. We're the ones that are cranking out the lesson plans. But we train the teachers to extend that and to create it themselves. Because like I said, the content is evergreen. There's new music that comes out. There's, we just used Beyonce's Formation song, a super controversial, in a unit around Toni Morrison's The Bluest Eye two weeks ago. Now that's a brand new song. I think it just came out when the Super Bowl came out. So the music is evergreen. If we, if we give teachers the strategies, they can constantly do this on the fly. This is how they can augment and, and, and really supplement their learning material. But, so they can build it and then they get, they get, they get paid, is right. that right? So it's a platform as a service. So the platform is built. The platform houses the lesson plans. So they just build the lesson plans. So, and then when it's streamed by other teachers, that's when they get the royalty. That's why you want to think like Spotify. Every time you play a track on Spotify, an artist gets royalty when that song is streamed. A lot of teachers want to, pre want, they need to review a lesson plan in detail to see if they're going to adopt it. So how, do you not let them do that? Because otherwise they'd have to pay for it and then decide that it's, it's not good quality and they, and, you know, so how do they, I mean, they, they really have to fully look at it to decide if they want to use it. Would they have to pay to do, to do that? So there's two ways to do it. There's a la carte, and we experimented with the a la carte model the, the last few weeks. So we'll take one lesson plan, and there's a, there's a tweet and a Facebook function for each lesson plan, so it'll shoot out on social media. And that's a part of our diffusion strategy, word of mouth and get it out. So if you see a lesson plan, you see the description, it looks interesting, you can click on it to get a quick preview. But you would then have to pay to get full access to that lesson plan. That's the a la carte model. 
the subscription model gives you access to all the lesson plans on a database. An, an audience question asked about um, music licensing, whether you know, how, are the, you're just using the lyrics or is the actual music part yeah. of this? So this is where we're going to bump against what would seemingly be a hurdle, but I think it's a partnership opportunity, uh, like, right? It's not just the spin. I, I, I got, I, I got some, uh, some theories about this. So because it's for education purposes, the local artists we've used and talked with, they love it. It gets them in front of the teenage crowd, which is hard to do, especially during the school hours. Um, so I think it represents an opportunity for mu music publishers to get to a demographic that they are really hands off during the daylight hours. And so I think this represents an opportunity to partner with the iTunes and then a partner with the record companies. We're talking to ASCAP, which is a music publisher. They have the licensing rights. But there's also third party ways and workarounds as well. Play, um, uh, AZ Lyrics and Music Match, which is partnered up with Spotify. If you've noticed the past three or four months, when you hear a song on Spotify, you can click lyrics and you'll see the lyrics playing as well. Music Match went out and got those contracts, so we can partner with them as a third party to get the rights to license um, the lyrics.